Hi, my name is Olia Hercules. NEF has just turned 140 years old. In order to celebrate, I'm collaborating with them, creating a menu of 14 unique dishes inspired by the last 14 decades in food. There is no better way to start a party than with an amazing champagne cocktail. This classic Bucks Fizz is inspired by the Roaring Twenties and Ritz breakfasts, when any excuse was used to start as early in the morning as possible. I've used a little bit of blood orange and some rosemary for my modern version, and it is delicious. I have created four different canapes for NAF. The first one is Andy with some goat skirt, some chopped pecans, rehydrated barberries and sorrel. And it's my ode to beautiful Belgium that really knows its chicory. The second canapé is Gravlax, marinated in beetroot and orange. Gravlax is normally a part of Smurgisbrot, which Swedes made internationally famous in 1930s. The third canapé is Melba Toast. It's a nod to Auguste Escoffier. He created this beautiful little toast for opera singer Nelly Melba, who was once ill at the summer when she would not have anything else. That's all she wanted to eat. But today it's topped with pigeon and chestnut pate, some gorgeous red currants and some chervil. The final canapé I've created is grilled octopus and scordalia. Of course, the Spanish and Greeks have been grilling octopus for millennia, but tapas has become such a huge recent trend. I thought it would be really good to include it today. Okay, would you like to come to the table? Here is our own version of the oxo cube broth. 1910s in Britain sees a huge rise in consumerism and commercialism and this is where the iconic and crucially time-saving OXO cube becomes very popular indeed. I admire Carlo Petrini and his slow food movement, which means growing your ingredients with utmost love and care. And there's no better representative of that than sourdough bread. I've got some incredible fermented butter. They're just so excellent together. And here's something delicious to duck your bread into. We have aptly reached the 1960s, the era of dinner parties, when the food and entertainment were taken from restaurants and into people's homes. And guess who the hero was? Good old fondue. I felt like we needed to cut through all of that luscious Swiss cheese. Here we have fermented pickles. We've got some heritage whiskey, carrots, some peas and cauliflower, and some beetroot, turmeric, and ginger. This is all connected to Brezhnev's era of stagnation in the 1960s and 70s. So while people in Western Europe were going through a rapid economic growth, people in Eastern Europe were experiencing food shortages. So they were forced to pickle. Some say Brezhnev, I say delicious palate cleanser. The 1941 Dick for Victory campaign encouraged people in Britain to grow more vegetables as meat was scarce. As a result, they created the Walton Pie, named after Lord Walton, who popularized the dish. I thought an amazing Bistecca Fiorentina would go really well with our humble Walton Pie. So for this, naturally, we go to Italy. And post-war, things were getting a little bit better. More women went to work, and they didn't have so much time to spend at home cooking, so things like steaks were a little bit easier to prepare. This great beast has been marinated in anchovies, balsamic vinegar and rosemary. We've got a cheese board of sorts and we're going to the beginning of our 140 year old journey. Back in the 1870s, population has risen a lot in Europe and farmers started moving from countryside into cities and the working class were in need of a really nutritious and quick meal. Here we've got Hutelport, a regional German cake made with nuts, dried fruit and pears. And today we'll be serving it with a lovely smoked Bavarian cheese and some ripe pears, a German version of a plowman's. Okay guys, I'll leave you to enjoy that and I'll put some finishing touches to your dessert. Baking has become such a massive trend all over the world in the past decade. I wanted to celebrate this occasion with this showstopper of a cake called Black Forest Gatto, one of the best from Germany. Whoa. Whoa. 
Okay, guys, when you're finished, I've got another little sweet treat for you. Churros con chocolate. So basically, in the 1890s, uh, chocolate became really big in Spain, and they started opening up chocolaterias, and it was a natural pairing between churros and chocolate. And now it's a classic as well. I mean, it just keeps going. It's amazing, isn't it? Thank you for coming to celebrate 140 years of food, guys. I hope you enjoyed yourselves.